Hello, I'm Brenda Murray and this is Studio 56 and today I'm going to be chatting with York Asselborn about his new book called Remains of the Journey. York is a draftsman, an urban sketcher, uh, he studied communication design with a focus on illustration in Mainz, Germany and since 1999 he has worked as a designer and an illustrator and lives in Wiesbaden near Frankfurt. He's a member of Urban Sketchers uh, chapter Rhein Main, and he has given lectures on urban sketching and taught workshops at the International USK Symposium in Amsterdam in 2019 and in Claremont Design in 2021. In addition to drawing on location, what fascinates him most uh, about urban sketching is the exchange and connection with other sketchers from all over the world. So welcome, York. Thanks for having there me. There he is. Hello. Good to see you. Uh, so, uh, York, um, I just want to tell everybody about the gorgeous, gorgeous book that you have just had published. And I have a copy here. It's heavy. It's a beautiful hardcover book, Remains of the Journey. And the uh, publisher is Correct. Is that right? Edition Correct. Yes, it's a Young French. Correct. It's a French publisher. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think you should be really super proud of this book. My goodness, it's beautiful. <laughs> it, it is, it's really, it's beautiful. It's a hard cover. And I'm gonna just show people that it comes with a slip cover. Wow. It's a landscape orientation, whoops, this way, landscape orientation. And the sketches and the, the drawings inside are absolutely gorgeous. So beautiful. Thank uh, you. Quite, some some uh, black and white like that, but also quite a few, um, in mostly in color, I think. Yeah. And uh, mostly. Yeah, mostly in color. Just just gorgeous. It's those are really big. Are these life size? These sketches. Um, yes, exactly um, the size I'm I'm drawing in. Uh, yeah. In heaven. That's that's the reason why I why we chose the the landscape format in A4 because that's mm -hmm. the exact size of my sketchbooks. So that's easy to size. to transform yeah. it. Yeah, that's the size exactly. Really, really beautiful. And uh, so I'm gonna just go straight into looking at the sketches, and uh, and I'm gonna ask you some questions as we go along. So um, this book is uh, organized, if you could turn your camera off, York, please. This book is organized into uh, different chapters. And uh, can you tell me about the organization of the book? First off? Yeah, I just um, needed a certain kind of, of order, which is quite, quite um, rough because um, I'm sketching everything I see, which attracts me. Um, but the... The basic order is buildings and places, then it's things, which will be like planes, cars, technical stuff, machines. I really love machines if I see them. Um, if I've got the time, then I stop and sketch. And um, then it's trees for some reason, because I love trees. And um, for some reason, I just, when I get stuck in sketching, um, I try to find a tree and then draw this because the forms really let me do everything I want and get loose. So um, it has an own chapter, which is just a few pages, but I, I found it worth to, to be a, a chapter. Yeah. And the places um, are also, I think I added two chapters with special places, which I spend some time there or which I visited or revisited to, to once or twice, um, just because they are so beautiful or so full of images and, and so worth to, to return, basically. Mm -hmm. So this sketch that we're looking at here, uh, what I see is a lot of white, a lot of white spaces. You didn't um, you know, paint every inch of your sketching book page. You're really using white to advantage. Yeah, this is, um, I'd call it a um, special thing to me just to, to make things as cutouts, um, to really have the form, the very form of, um, of the, the building or the, the thing be in front of me. So um, if I'd put some background, it would probably a bit, be a bit disturbing. 
but um, sometimes I really do. Uh, I do also backgrounds. So not very often times, but um, sometimes. And when I'm looking through the book, I'm seeing a lot of really interesting shapes. Like the yeah. overall shape is, I think, is what attracts you. Exactly, exactly. Okay, then I'm reading it right. I'm glad. Yeah. <laughs> and also, I, th- I was thinking to myself, where does he find these things? My gosh. <laughs> like, I think I have a special view for that. Um, this one was really, I picked this in the internet because I, I did some research and I stumbled <laughs> over it. And I thought I have to go there. And then suddenly there was a possibility to, to visit Liège because some sketchers were, were, um, had organized a sketch venue over there. And this was the go for me to um, go there and drive there and see that building and um, sketch it. Really? Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. And what is this building? You can ask, is this some sort of observatory or? It's an, uh, an old uh, observatory, exactly. And um, it's in a really nice part of Liège, um, but very, um, it, you can't approach um, quite near because it's, uh, the, the, the area is, um, is locked. And it's just, it just opens once or twice a year for some uh, venues and events. Um, so I just sat behind the, the fence with some other sketches and um yeah catched it okay it. yeah it's 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 a really cool design so uh, the how much of the book is in color would you say i think most i think 80 80 to 90 percent probably okay and maybe so more few, maybe more yeah a few black and whites where you just didn't have time to paint them yeah and i decided to to leave them as they are because um yeah it's um this is I have to admit, um, very often times I do the color later. So um, yeah. I just make a photograph to remind myself of the colors and the situations, because um, once I'm I'm at a location, I try to sketch as much as I can, and not spend too much time on on waiting for colors to dry, or I don't have the the, the right place to to really spread all over my colors and stuff so I just sketch black and white and then sometimes I do color just sometimes I do color on on the spot right you know what I'm I'm looking at your sketches and I'm thinking to myself this is an artist that I really admire and would love to emulate I I look at your sketches I I honestly at York I've looked at and interviewed a lot of artists and yours, your style of art uh, resonates the most with me personally, honestly. Thanks so much. Yeah, that's <laughs> true. You. It's true. No, I, I can see um, that this yours is the direction I would like my art to go in. So um, and I think that when people come to an interview like this or they buy a book like your book um, and they really study it, that's when you really learn a lot from another artist. If you have uh, a body of work in front of you and you can really look through and, uh, and that's why I invited you for this interview, because I'm like, I have to interview this guy. It's, it's so beautiful. Your art is really so beautiful. So let's talk, because I know people might want to know this, about your materials. Um, you've got watercolor, obviously, and anything else? Yeah, it's, it's a mix. Basically, I'm, um, yeah, of course, the sketches with a um, fine liner um, sketcher. A pencil and um, the colors are watercolors done in several washes and then I add some crayons some white uh, gel pen stuff and there you see the graffiti is done with uh, a brush white brush pen with uh, white ink in, inside so I basically it's 80 to 90 percent watercolor and then the finish is done with crayons and um uh, gel pens etc whatever comes comes to help uh, yeah express the thing did you mention are you a, a fountain pen person or are you more of a micron person <laughs> i'm really more the micron person i okay. really i'm fighting with fountain pens it's i i would love to to sketch with a fountain pen because i i have several i didn't manage to to make it work for me no. by by now but yeah and you're starting, are you starting with a pencil? I'm going directly with uh, the fine liner. Oh, good for you. That would be difficult, especially on 
the underside of like this windmill that's very complicated there's a lot of small absolutely. detail there absolutely yes so admire takes a lot of time <laughs> admire admire <laughs> <laughs> thanks a lot. really good for you a pat on the back that's really well done so again here we have a couple of sketches with amazing shapes really interesting shapes which i guess you're going to get if you're uh, sketching windmills but uh, these are really great really fantastic uh, i think the shape Shapes like this really grab your eye because they're so unusual. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. Wow. That's that's mostly I, I that's why I mostly draw old buildings because um, to the interesting shapes added on onto that is um, that they are really bended sometimes by age, by whatever, by decay, mm -hmm. and that even makes it more interesting for me to to have the form even more exaggerated or um, play with uh, the texture of it. I really love that. So yeah. Um, yeah. And this was this was done in our last um, family holiday. Mm -hmm. And um, when I did some research where to go in, in France, um, gladly my wife found the place. So um, we decided to go there. And one of my top goals was <laughs> this church. <laughs> I saw it in in my research of the of the location, and I knew that I had to do that. That absolutely, I wouldn't have even guessed this was a church, honestly, it, because a, yeah, it's a clock tower, an old clock tower. Yeah. Uh, because they put up some kind of support beams here to hold the thing up, right? But to me, it looked like maybe it's a, a granary or something like that. No, it's a it's a separate clock tower to a, a nearby wooden church. Also, really a beautiful building, and and those buildings were done by um, the craftsmen um, years 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 ago when they came home in winter and had nothing to do. Yeah, and they they built those wonderful buildings, and um, I think the beams are on purpose because um, it's the it's a static thing it's not done afterwards it's part of the it's part of the building so <laughs> even so even more adorable for me I, I know it's like spider legs or something i yes. don't know yeah I, I was thinking it was some kind of a greenery at first so that's just crazy so uh people if you're watching and you want to ask your question you can type it in the q a box and we'll be happy to read it and ask him uh, out loud your question Okay, here we are in Bern, Switzerland. Exactly. Yeah. That was the, the Switzerland Symposium. I have um, gave a workshop there. And this was the, the task for my participants to, um, to go for. And yeah. um, I did a test before, so um, <laughs> if it looked good for me. <laughs> and um, I, I love those chimneys and those... Yeah things on the roof and the windows and stuff and when you when you compare this to other cities it's so different even the chimneys from london the london chimneys are so different from for example those one here or the the, the chimneys and in, in, on houses and in, uh, in france yeah so diff different and um, i try to really pay attention to those details because that makes it special for me it does it does absolutely you won't see anything even remotely like this anywhere in canada which is where <laughs> i am i guarantee you <laughs> so um victoria is asking which paper is in the sketchbooks which kind of paper the the paper is or let me let me refer to the sketchbook is a moldskin uh, um, watercolor album a4 so i have to to deal with the paper inside of it but it works works fine for me um it really holds the the color i'm i'm putting onto it and doing all my um yeah my rubbing and scrubbing and lifting off color and stuff which i do so this is the paper i really work well with yeah do you lift off color a lot yeah do it's you? basically it's, it's basically part of the process the, the first wash i do the first wash and then if i have some highlights um i want to to, to lift off i do that in this first really first um go and i think it's 
really very often times uh, part of the process lifting yeah. off color and rubbing it with some cloth or um you know manipulating yeah. in other ways okay cool so um this this building especially the one on the right looks like a little worse for wear <laughs> <laughs> So does that appeal to you? Are you looking for buildings that have had, you know, that are, you know, down and out? <laughs> yes, definitely, because the they, they tell it, they tell a story. Yes. It's um, if you have um, buildings freshly renovated, you you've there is, it's with a with a smooth surface. That's not so appealing to me. Um, so an old building. A bit decayed um, tells me a lot more than than uh, a new building with straight lines. So, and I'm going always going to look for um, crooked lines, um, individual things I can find texture. So, for me, that's a paradise to find um, a city which which really has those kind of houses. Of course, for the for the, um, the people who live in there, it's probably a, a different question. But um, mm -hmm. for me, from outside as a sketcher, I love that. Yeah, these are beautiful. And I love all this, um, what do they call it? Like the uh, uh, watercolor blooms in, in the paint that just have yeah. add so much to the building, to the texture. All right, so special places. Okay, here we are, where are we? We are uh, in an iron iron uh, factory um, near the French border, which is now. Um, oh, I hope I, I can get the English words. Um, part of the World Heritage um, by UNESCO. It's um, up there. It's Völklinger Hütte, so an old iron works, which is now a museum. You can you can go in there and visit and lose yourself for hours and hours and hours. So you have all the old buildings of the craftsmen. You have the big, big, big machinery. You have the ovens. You have um, the, the 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 engines for for the energy they used 100 and 150 years ago, and there is so <laughs> much to see, and it's overwhelming. So um. I, it was so overwhelming for me um, that I had to really focus on small things because the whole building site, the whole ironwork site, is so huge and so big, and it's like a like a like a big I don't know the word organismus. That's the German words. It's like a subject, living subject an organism an organism thank you so much um so i was not able to draw this and i focused on on parts of it it's a small part well i love how the ink is i mean the paint is um really flowing into each other and uh you've got these layers on this i don't even know what this thing is but um <laughs> i think really it's a water beautiful. i think it's a water tank just a water oh, okay. tank yeah beautiful beautiful i love that how the sienna and the blue are uh, mixing with each other there really lovely okay and this is the same place this is the same place where you can find um hints of history of the people who worked there this was a workbench for example they had cobbles by themselves because um they had no protection from all the the parts in the air and all the dust flying around so they needed something to hide themselves to to eat their meals and um, this is really, I find this really emotionally um, heavy to, to think about how people worked in there 100 years ago, 150 years ago, or even 50 years ago. Um, so this is, for me, this, this all tells stories. Yeah. Not, not even about the place, about the, the people who um, worked in there. Interesting. Very interesting. Okay, I, you're going to have to tell me what I'm looking at. <laughs> yes, just this was the, the 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 at the time when I was so overwhelmed, I just had to do some chimneys because. Uh, okay. <laughs> and the right on the right hand, there is a. Um, I've lost uh, the word for it. Uh, Spind, um, Schrank, a cupboard of a worker, 
and they opened this after they had closed down the whole factory and they they opened it and left it as they've done done it at that time so you find all the stuff in there left there dec decades ago so so maybe you're talking about a locker a locker thank a you a personal locker yeah exactly wow wow oh, so interesting okay and uh this is under special places this is the special place um the second one um we did a trip uh, with uh, some wonderful and really admired sketches i admire them a lot um, like uh, lapin you probably know him um, yes or jenny adam mm -hmm. um lots of of other sketches um we did a trip to um the island of wesson which is the farthest island farthest westwards of france and of europe actually so it's right in the middle of the atlantic ocean oh wow and and we um wandered around and bicycled around for three days and catched some of uh, the beauty and the magic of, of that island is it um, french yeah oh wow interesting hmm. i thought the azores would maybe be the farthest western island well, I think um, at least um, that's what I that's what I know. Hmm, Main Europe, mainland Europe. Yeah. Yeah. OK, there we go. Sort of zoom out. Of exactly. Your point. And this, for example, I, I did the look, uh, the, the color on location, which is quite um, just a just a bit of color to do justice to the place. Mm -hmm. But it was so quite beautiful and um, quiet place so I had really the time and the um the focus to do that on on, on location oh, beautiful okay wow you know what these trees really struck me as well because I thought um you really get the sense of the wildness of the savageness of the trees and yeah. uh and the wind wind yeah, the wind for yeah yeah um the wind is all over the the island and um you hardly see trees so um i was looking for some trees as i told earlier and um, every now and then i tried to, to to catch some trees and we it was really hard to find it this was on um, a private property of a lady who really politely let us in and and draw the trees and the funny thing about this last um month i uh, met a guy in france uh, who told me what what were you doing in the garden of my of my mother-in-law just no. tell me <laughs> yes and it, and it turned out that 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 lady was the mother-in-law of uh, of this uh, of this artist i met there and oh. um, because you can't you can't really see those trees in this particular perspective outside of the property so you have to be on the property to see them as it is and um Sometimes it's funny how things, how, how circles mm -hmm. close. Yeah. How, yeah. Really well done. I love how you, you've done these. They're beautiful. Okay, vehicles, boats, and aircraft. Oh my goodness. So you really do look for the smashed up and the. Yeah. <laughs> well, I have to decaying. say, I wasn't the only one sitting at the trash uh, yard um, <laughs> to draw things. So I have a lot of people in, uh, that really love that sujet as well. Yeah. I wasn't yeah. the only one. But of course, uh, I mean, so much forms and deformation and rust and shadows and stuff. I really love that yeah i do too it's a super amazing fun to sketch the older it is and if you know any flaws i i always say you know if your drawing has flaws then it's, it's going to be more the more charming and if the subject has flaws it, it's so much fun to sketch so <laughs> if anyone has questions you can pop them into the q a box and we will ask them wow very nicely done Jorg. thank you yeah, so, so that's fun. a typical French, southern French car from the last from last year, I think, as well. Yeah, super. So was this a uh, on the road still, or did you find this in the junk heap? No, actually, that was uh, the car of the um, property owner we were um, 
we were living in. So um, sometimes I'm really lucky. So I hope she doesn't watch this video. <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay, tell us about these two drivers. That's what I want to know. That's a, a bit, uh, yeah, that's a bit dodgy, but um, it was like that. Um, exposed in, uh, in a museum in Malaga. I was invited to do the, um, a workshop there and a talk. Right. Um, in uh, South by of Spain. Luis Ruiz in uh, south of Spain. Uh -huh. And I went to the museum, to the um, uh, car museum there, which is fantastic. I just, um, if, you, if you are there, visit the museum mm -hmm. and this was a an original car from uh, 1916 from the world war one area uh, time wow. and um that's why the the two guys the two yeah um mannequins probably. mannequins uh, wearing gas masks wow. which is creepy enough um and more creepy was that the car was really in the state of that that time of 1916 yeah. they didn't do anything about it uh, and they didn't renovate or whatever uh, and you could see bullet holes in there and um it was the car of a doctor uh who was driven around to to um care for some injured um soldiers and and uh, and people basically mm -hmm. so that was that was the side story of it wow cool and a nice volvo and you've handled it's obviously it was very shiny and you've handled the shininess of it the smoothness of the exterior really well nicely done thank you yeah and i love this perspective too which i think is uh lapan does this a lot right? <laughs> yes exactly <laughs> he sits yeah. on his little micro stool with his face like six inches away from the exactly that's, from a that's corner. My, that was my perspective and i really have um learned a lot from Lapin's uh, perspective and mm -hmm. um, approach. I really love love his work. So, it's beautiful. Yeah, you does. can see influences of that. Yeah, I, <laughs> I I didn't think about it until this moment, but yeah, I think that's probably true. So, were there a group of you all sitting with your stools like six inches from this car? From this car, no, because it's the car <laughs> of my grandfather, and um, oh, okay. that was just me. <laughs> okay, just you. Okay, cool. So, a lot of blues and siennas in your work. Yeah, that's that. That was for some reason. Um, I I'm starting with uh, the burnt sienna and the ultramarine blue with a mix because you can always use it to be more reddish or more bluish. Yeah, and you can can get beautiful grays, just neutral grays, and yeah. um, you can push back and forth. Mm -hmm. And building things up from that um, is quite rewarding. So um, and I have some. A certain control over it which yeah. is uh, in watercolor you can't fully have control over over things but um that's the magic about it as well cool if so if anyone wants to pop a question into the q a box you can type it there and we'll be happy to answer it so this is a, a novice question i guess uh york but are there certain hues that have that granulation in built in like better than others more than others yeah definitely definitely i'm using or i'm looking for those granulating colors and um you have those colors from different from several brands like uh, schminke does them windsor newton has beautiful ones with natural um granulation and um i have to say that the unsurpassed is the daniel smith um color um, really portfolio with uh, granulation granulating colors um yeah this is that true the, of sorry is that true of all the like all the hues in daniel smith or just certain hues just certain hues you really okay. um they really focus on on the granulating colors but they have uh, also uh, non-granulating colors okay well uh, it's so beautiful when that happens it's just so uh, it just adds a texture that's really beautiful i love it this is I love all this texture with the granulation in here. It's just gorgeous. So uh, when she is asking, um, she's, she's saying, talk about cross hatching. How do you choose cross hatching, for instance? Only Is it only in black and white? I try to avoid uh, cross hatching, actually, because... Um, you just do hatching. 
I do hatching, I do emphasizing the core shadows, or um, like here you can see this on the bumpers, um, just to indicate some, some, some little bruises and stuff with some hatches. But usually I don't do cross hatching because once you, you've done that, you have to go all the way through. Right. Um, you can't do this in one, on one spot and leave out the rest. It would look somehow strange. Mm -hmm. So you really decide on uh, whether you use it or not. And I'm not cross hatching at all because I know um, also that I will get out texture and shadows and depth um, with my watercolors later on. So um, the more I put uh, lines on it, um before um the less uh space and area i have for the watercolors to um to do their trick or magic or whatever yeah yeah, yeah. i think you did such a uh, made such a really good decision in the windows here to not uh do the full black line and so you use some kind of a gray ink or yeah that's a gray um fine liner you, you can find them by if people want to know it um, by Copic, for example, uh -huh. Winsor Newton has some darker grays as well. So there are a lot of um, choices you can you can ref refer to and um, to use that effect. Yeah, it it it, uh, it it works so well because if you'd done the black line in there, um, it would have you wouldn't have had the depth. You wouldn't. It would just be a flatter. Um, exactly exactly but the, yeah so that looks really great it's such a great idea i learn so much when i do these interviews it's, it's great for me <laughs> uh and here we have some gorgeous granulation in the in the watercolor again so beautiful yeah and i do a lot of of tapping and 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 lifting off color with cloths and all kinds of um rubbing with uh, the brushes etc so um really yeah it's um it's causing causing accidents basically and see what happens because um um the the thing itself uh the sujet deserves it to be to have some texture some individual texture i would love to see you demonstrate that that would be really cool to see because it's hard to when you're looking at the sketch to figure out where did he lift off it's just hard to see um I have to see you demonstrate. I hope you'll demonstrate for me sometime. <laughs> Why not? Yeah, nice white line through here too. Beautiful. Okay, if anybody else has any more questions, you can add them by typing them in the Q&A box and we will try to get to them. Okay, and again, a gorgeous use of, of the white space, York. It's lovely. Yeah, what one could say I'm 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 afraid of backgrounds, maybe. <laughs> but um, as I said, for me, it's a way to to really work out the the forms. Yeah, yeah, it, uh, I think it's really smart actually because um, it it really focuses the viewer on the thing that you want them to focus on, rather than filling the whole page from you know edge to edge with details and then you know the viewer has to choose where they're looking they're sort of looking all over the place so it's a really great idea and also this background bit here in, in a finer uh, lighter gray is really smart great technique oh my gosh <laughs> <laughs> another another crazy thing in, inside a museum and here you can see that i i really did a lot of lifting off um it's quite quite obvious to see to to work out the the form and, and the round shape of um, the metal and the water it's fantastic shape. it's it almost looks like a whale or some organic beast yeah yeah it's great super great really lovely my gosh i i i love the subjects that you choose they're so fun really interesting shapes Okay, so now we're back in Malaga, Spain. Exactly. That was a, a propped up boat uh, in the harbor, which was then, um, that was no longer used. And um, yeah, a thing for me to draw. Yeah, something and, fun. Um, something falling apart. That's great for York. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> okay. 
and more and boats. This was, yeah, more boats. This was at the beautiful um, USK Symposium in Amsterdam. I really love to think um, back to that. Um, and it was so hot and I tried to yeah. put some watercolor on it. And me and my friend, uh, sketcher friend Johanna, were trying to, to sketch on a bridge, which was in the, sh in the, in the, in the shades. And then uh, half an hour later, we were in 40 degrees sun. And yes. the, the watercolor wasn't working. It was just drying away. Just in yeah. an instant, it was dry. So um, yeah. I had to keep this for, for, for home, for you know, tuning. I tuning. was there. I was there in Amsterdam. And it was like 40 something degrees. It was crazy. Celsius. Yeah. And, uh, and yeah. I think, and we had a, uh, we had a boat. We, we rented a boat. Oh. Um, to sleep in wow okay you know, what that do you call those those uh houseboat, houseboat. yeah houseboat. Yeah. and um i think you drew it there i think that's pretty much what we were sleeping <laughs> okay <laughs> it was a pretty the upper bad one? the upper one yeah okay. i was okay. in pretty bad condition and no air conditioning and just i was like basically a, a an oven that was floating bit of a trap yeah. yeah, it was it was, it was really <laughs> fun. Well, you have a story, right? So Anna <laughs> is asking, what is the name of the artist that you quite like? Oh, there are so many artists I really admire and quite like. So, um, oh, you mean uh, urban sketchers, sketchers? Um, there are so many. And do you mean an urban sketcher or just in general, any artist? We'll see if she types. I mean, but all my all my sketcher friends, I could start now with um i've mentioned all, already like um jenny adam lapin um, johanna Kremel. she did also a, a workshop in amsterdam and um louis ruiz um so i will i will probably don't do justice to any anybody else because there's so many i, I really so many. admire so many so many and and guys doing more concept art stuff like um ian McHugh, check this one out his drawings are amazing and he he can do everything from digital to to traditional to drawing and so many others um i can't really yeah. say them all it's it's a long list of 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 artists Okay, so um, I'll repeat them what, what he just said, Anne, um, because I, I really not gonna have time to type names, but he mentioned Johanna Krimmel, it's with a K and two M's, Johanna Krimmel, K-R-I-M-M-E-L, and also Louis Rui, which is spelled L-U-I-S and R-U-I-S, Louis Ruiz, do you say the S? From, uh, Louis Ruiz. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, from and, Malaga. Uh-huh. Uh and uh, Ian McHugh, and also Lapin. So now we're going to look at a cabinet of curiosities. Wow. This, <laughs> so this yeah. is from museums. Uh, Museum Alsacian. Alsacian, yeah, exactly, in France. But I, um, not to, I think I've sent you this one afterwards because it's not included in the book. It's quite new. Okay. Um, what I've done here, so it doesn't matter anyway, because it shows what I um, love when I'm in museums or when I'm about just to check out things that make me curious or have some some funny history or some some interesting forms. Um, or I, just I, an I interesting to, shape. <laughs> interesting shape and texture, basically. Yeah, it, it really I really wanted to see how I can manipulate the watercolors on for the left hand for this like it's a it's a um, cock you put on the roof out of um, clay what is it clay tone um, I don't know the English word I'm sorry about that like a wind or uh, yeah 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 exactly. weather vane a weather vane thank you okay I will have to to learn this vocabulary <laughs> um, and to to really work out um, the texture of the material that really yeah. was was my my goal and to, to great really, job yeah and this form it. this this uh, piece in the middle is that a um uh, a small toilet for children from um <laughs> okay. 
early ages, like the um, 18th century or 19th century or whatever it was, maybe yeah. early. Cool. I was trying to figure out what, what word would he know? If I say potty, he's not going to know <laughs> the word. So anyway, so and here we are in the uh, Thinkenberg Museum. It's a, exactly. Uh, it's a natural history museum where they have uh, in the, in the very um, the last uh, level, they have built an, an ancient museum uh, department just to show people how museums tended to be 100 years ago. <laughs> and it's that's my cabinet of curiosity, really. It's like yeah. left, left there are brains from animals and stuff and oh, wow. humans as well and um, all kinds of, you know, things in alcohol which you wouldn't want Formaldehyde. to Formaldehyde, yeah. 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 yeah, exactly. So, and you're doing these sketches straight with the pen. Exactly. No pencil, yeah. good for you. No, no because um, it focused, you focus best when you have no other choice than go directly straight forward onto the, to the paper. And I'm a bit lazy as well. So if I would do the pencil first, um, I would have to retrace all the information afterwards. Yeah. yeah. So this doesn't, out for me um, okay well you're really, inspiring me <laughs> thank you yeah i think yeah i think the focus is one uh, of the main aspects then you really try to catch your object as best as you can and really observe really really closely what you can see there mm -hmm. cool and here we have some more hatching not cross hatching just hatching just hatching exactly to all to form all the bruises and the shadows just to give a hint of of the three-dimensional um shapes you see there cool. gorgeous museum once i'm i will go there another another time in my life maybe i don't know because it's so far away <laughs> but if then I, i'll spend probably three days in this museum this is great museum the canterbury wow. museum cool oh my goodness and just oh my goodness the texture that you have been able to capture here is spectacular in the colored uh in the painted pieces beautiful how many layers of paint is on this iron good question um three well wow, it's beautiful three, four i don't know maybe more it's really not, not, not too many. It's like something between three and five, I'd mm -hmm. say. Yeah. Wow. And you went again for the really wacky shapes. Yes, of course. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> and your and, trees. Yeah. I think it's just so great for the people who are watching this to have a chance to really just sit with your work as if they are flipping through your book and um, really see, you know, this is how he approaches the subject. And you can really learn a lot just by absorbing um, just the way you handle, for example, the texture in this tree with your line work is beautiful. Very nice. And that's your book. Is this our last slide? I think it is. Very nice. And so that, okay. that's your book. Your book is 128 pages. It's hardcover. And uh, I'm going to stop share now. Your so if you want to put your camera on hardcover, yes. and it's available. How can people purchase this book? Uh, you just um, uh, we, we just have the address of uh, the online shop of the of the um, the editor, which mm -hmm. is Liber Distri. Um, I can I can write it in the chat as well. Okay, that'd be great. <laughs> And, and um, it's a really well-made people. It's a beautiful hardcover book. It comes with a slip cover and it's just really, really well done. So thank you so much, York, for sharing your art with me. And thank you for viewers. having me. Yeah. So just so that people know, um, I've got some upcoming workshops. Uh, if you're interested, uh, in-person workshops uh, with Hazel Stone. She's going to be teaching in San Diego uh, in August uh, this summer. And also Scott Stava is going to be teaching a workshop in Venice in October. And Pat Southern Pierce will be teaching a workshop in Savannah, Georgia in November. 
And Stephanie Bauer is going to be teaching one in San Miguel de Allende, Mexico in January. So if you want more information about that, please visit our website, www.studio56boutique.com. And uh, yeah, and if you've enjoyed this interview, please uh, sign up for our newsletter where you can be alerted about future upcoming interviews and free demos with wonderful artists like York Ethelborn. Thank you, York. Thanks for having me. Thanks for listening. Yeah, thanks so much. Thanks, everyone. I hope you have a wonderful Sunday and happy sketching. Bye happy for now. Sketching. <laughs>